Hey. <laughs> wow, this is amazing. Um, well, my name is Eugene King. I just joined the CMX team in just a few months ago as their senior events manager, and I'm so excited to be moderating this panel on how to create memorable community events. So what I'm going to do is we'll just do a really brief introduction, um, but why don't we go ahead and start with you, Piper? Okay. So I'm Piper Wilson. I've kind of been in community, running around community, studying community for about the last 15, 20 years, 15 years, let's just say that much. And um, I work for Higher Logic, and I work with a lot of different communities, not just one. I work with associations and, um, what do you call them, corporate corporate customers, and I help them with their strategy and tactics and working with all those things to go down to their communities so they can work with their communities and build up. Awesome. Thank you. And then we'll have Kayla go next. Thank you. I'm Kayla Lim. I'm based out of New York. I lead the community experience for The Org. We are a company that makes org charts public. I know that Common Room is on there, Higher Logic is on there, and Bevy. They're all on the org platform, so you can check them out if you want to see their structures. Um, what I do is I make sure that the people who work at the org have an incredible experience, and I'm building community for those who build org charts, which are often team leaders. What do we have you, Rebecca? Hey, I'm Rebecca. I'm the head of community at Common Room, which we love to say is the intelligent community growth platform that helps you deepen relationships with your members, build better products and experiences with them together in tandem with them, and both drive and measure business impact, because I know that I think we all believe that until we can all elevate the community profession and industry together, like that's where we need to go. And so we want to be able to show stakeholders across organizations how impactful a community can be. Awesome. Well, before we dive in, I just really want to pause and take a moment to give it up to all of our community managers who have planned an event the past two to three years and for coming out of it, and now we're thriving. So yes. Okay, so let's just dive right into it and let's talk about memorable experiences. And we really want to emphasize the word memorable and what that means. Um, there's so many events out there, so let's talk about what makes an event memorable? What makes something stick? So let's talk about that. So how about, Piper, why don't you go ahead and just share what really makes something memorable? Okay. Well, memorable is triggered by different things to different people. For me, memories are triggered by color and, or sights actually, and the smell of vanilla. And it's very specific, I think. But, um, I used to go to a rotating game night, and whenever we went to the host's home who house smelled like vanilla, mm. I would go in there and it felt like a warm blanket, and I loved going to their house. And that was like, you know, it's not an event, but it was memorable, mm -hmm. and I still remember it, and I still want to go back to their house even though the rotating game night is no longer yeah. <laughs> you know, COVID, thank you. I love the memorable moments, yes. right? Yes, and Rebecca? Yeah, so I think to build off what you were saying, Piper, there's something about um, a tangibility and like in what I would say some, makes something really memorable is how can you infuse thoughtfulness into an experience end to end? So from the moment you cross that threshold into a home, what do you smell, what do you see, or into an event, into a meet up into a restaurant, like whatever you are doing with your community, how do you even make that entryway? In your case, it was sight or smell, mm -hmm. right? right? Something memorable. Um, I also think there are ways where you can provide thoughtfulness in details where it's like, okay, now that you've entered the space, how do you give someone the ability to have agency about how they hold space for themselves while interacting with others? And so something that we do at our, our events, but is borrowed from other community leaders that we've loved to see to see do it is um, using different colored name tags. So people allowing themselves to say like green name tag, hugs are welcome. Purple name tag, a uh, wave or a handshake. Mm -hmm. um, pink name tag, just a wave, or sorry, a handshake or a high five. Uh, pink name tag, just a wave, right? So giving people that agency to still be them full, their full selves so they feel like they can participate in these memorable experiences but still allow themselves to be the individuals within them. 
Um, I also think there are ways where like, how do you provide people fun ways to have icebreakers, right? Or fun ways to, like icebreakers maybe sounds a little like, you know, corporate, whatever. Um, but there is something to the, expect, to the extent of uh, enabling people to kind of approach each other when they feel new to each other. And so things that we've been experiencing or experimenting with is printing icebreaker questions on napkins. Mm -hmm. So if you're holding your napkin and you're holding a drink or you're holding a piece of pizza or whatever that is, you can each kind of share in that experience of um, like kind of a fun random question. Um, I think one of my favorites is, would you rather sip tequila with Dwayne The Rock Johnson or um, have gin with Ryan Gosling? Nice. Um, so there are just like ways that you can kind of infuse across time, like across from the moment the, me the event starts all the way through the end to something like, okay, how do you make sure that now these people have come, you give them the opportunity to give feedback to you about what was memorable for them, what wasn't, what would have been more impactful for them. And so that way they still feel involved and like connected and cared for throughout an entire experience. Okay. Right. So I gotta know, for the people that are at home, put in the chat, which is your answer? The one with The Rock or the one with Ryan Gosling? Yeah. yeah, okay. yeah. And Rebecca, which is your answer? Ooh, I love fizzy water, so whoever made LaCroix, if I could just sip well, that's with That's not one of the choices. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I love LaCroix. Well, I'll like, go with The Rock, actually. Okay. okay. Right. Yeah. Why would I hold back? It's The Rock. I, I went on a date with someone once and leaned over. It's like first date or something. I was like, I'd leave, I'd leave you for The Rock. You know, he's like, I'd leave you for The Rock, too. <laughs> so... <laughs> well, it sounds like you know it has to be a sensory experience, and you're being mindful of our, your attendees' comfort levels, and there also has to be a low threshold in terms of their participation in the event. So it's really being mindful of just them and, and their presence at the event. So I love that. And Kayla, I know you had a few examples and stories to share about that. Yes, I have a lot of events I definitely remember. Um, I'll remember this one for sure. I'll remember that Savannah was absolutely right with that you can really only see the first three rows <laughs> <laughs> and everything beyond that is like completely dark. So for the people sitting in the front, like, thank you. Going to remember you. All the energy is clearly here. And I really appreciate that. Um, so I just want to preface by saying, in New York, ever since the restrictions got lifted, I'm very bullish of in-person events. I think while it's a transient city, we all just kind of crave that connection and reading body language and the nuances that can only be felt when you're like this. So to, to do this right now is a massive privilege. Uh, an event I remember is a particular housewarming that had happened in Brooklyn. You enter this like warehouse-looking apartment and immediately when you go in, the first person manning the door instructs you to take off your shoes and you swap into these spa-like white slippers and you enter on the first floor, which has the biggest birds of paradise plants I have ever seen and like the sunset light that went across the back wall and everyone was just sort of hanging back on a big cushion and just like chilling and talking and there wasn't any alcohol to be found. They were only serving like cold pressed juices. Wow. In the bathroom nearby, they had a tub, which is a luxury in a New York apartment. Mm -hmm. So they had this bathtub and they were doing cold plunges for breath work. Wow. And when you went upstairs, which went to the rooftop, everybody was sitting in these like meditation circles where you were able to just like sit and chat and get to like know people in groups of five or six. And then all the way in the basement, was the dance floor, which is where I was all night. And you had like an EDM DJ just kind of go on and play some of his work. Everybody was dancing. And the reason why it made a lot of sense to me and why I felt kind of immersed in this experience right away is because they took care of like all my senses when I walked in, from like meeting someone to what I smelled, to what it looked like, to what I heard, to what I was drinking, which was like a cold pressed kale juice. All of it felt like I was meant to be here at this time. Mm. And that is why, to this day, I remember it to being like one of the best housewarmings I've ever been to. I mean, I think that's a really great example because there are events out there where it's really pointing only to the brand and things can be really gaudy and just, you know, there's not much to participate in. But it does seem like this was meant for you and the user's experience. And that you felt cared for. And you said, how did you feel leaving the event? I wanted to come back. Okay. I think one of, one of the best compliments for anyone who does an event is a repeat attendee. Yeah. Right? And I, I feel 
I mean, Brooklyn in itself has such a strong community, but within that borough to have like more micro communities, like those are very powerful. Right. So to take some people who are essentially strangers and to say like, we're gonna gather and have this one shared experience of this evening, that in itself was something that's always gonna be with me. Right. And I think that's incredible. That's amazing. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's awesome. I have, what, was The Rock there though? The Rock wasn't, no, no, no. he wasn't. Yeah. Next time though. Was he drinking yeah. kale juice? Yeah. <laughs> so I think you're totally right, right? A repeat attendee is like the, the holy grail of like what a compliment that someone wants to come back. And I would say a, a smaller subsection of that is even someone who um, takes their time to then give you feedback about the event yeah. is also like a, that's con like we consider that a gift. And I think yes. most community managers, if not yeah. all, I don't want to speak for everyone, but like, that feedback is a gift and it's like that in itself is also like, wow, you came to the event and then you, take time, you took your time to say like what worked, what didn't work. And so I think both of those are, are a measure of success, right? If yes. people are still engaging with you afterwards. Yes. Talking about feedback, I mean, just to give a really short story, I was sitting next to Emily Blanche on the plane here from LA and she was on the other, only other panel on events here for Summit. And out of all of the plane seats, we just were able to sit next to each other. And she was saying, are you, are you working on Summit? And I said, yeah. And she's, I'm speaking there. What are you talking about? Events? Oh my gosh. And so we started geeking out about events. <laughs> and she shared something really fascinating in that obviously the pandemic just turned all of our processes just upside down. And she was even talking about the user and the attendee has to walk away with something mm -hmm. valuable to them. Like, what are you really wanting them to take away from your event? And it was interesting that, you know, we send post-event surveys, and it makes sense, we want their feedback. But she completely thought about it in a com different way, and she said, you know, we sent a pre-event survey and asked, what do you want? What do you want from our events? What kind of experience are you looking for? What content are you looking for? And instead of the event being more of a, just like a, an event and you just let them react to it, it's almost like too late in a sense. And You're so have, it. Yeah, exactly. And so that event is more now a reaction and it's fulfilling the need of your users. And I thought that was just really fascinating. So yeah. just really looking at what does your community need? What do they want? And just making it really clear, just ask them, what do you yeah. want? Yeah. And even just asking, do you want a virtual experience? Do you want an in-person experience? Of course, everyone gives different answers, but at least you get a sense. And I think during the pandemic, it was always a guessing game, especially coming out of it. Mm -hmm. How many people are gonna come out? You know, what do they, do they, are they okay with box lunches? Do they want a buffet? You, we just don't know. So let's get clarity on that. And I think that was really eye-opening for me. So we talked about what makes an event memorable, what makes an event stick. So now let's talk about, let's get practical. Let's talk about the tools and the approach of how you make an, a memorable experience. Um, so Rebecca, let's, let's go to you. What tools and what's your approach in your strategy for that? Yeah, I, I think maybe similar to what Emily was saying. So as the head of community and at Common Room, our community is called Uncommon. Mm -hmm. And so we build or events with them or we try to like, you know, survey polls or see what the temperature is, mm -hmm. right? Like what are people asking? What are people sharing? What are people, um, where do they need more support, right? What are their themes or topics that, right. that are on their minds? Um, so instead of getting to like, oh, here's a, a landscape of things that we do, I'll, I'll highlight two events that we've run recently, um, both digitally, um, with two community members mm -hmm. who are also their, their community leaders in their own right. So the first one was uh, with Korosh Ghaffari, who um, is the co-founder of Waves, or, um, and he had written this piece that said, you know, here's six, I believe it was six hard community truths, that like, what, what, are, what do we keep saying uh, as community leaders that aren't necessarily what we, what, what lies are we telling ourselves about like what we believe we should be doing in community or, or what we shouldn't do. Um, and so he, when he wrote that piece, he was like, you know, this is probably gonna have some sort of like, it's gonna bring up some challenging conversation. Yeah. And so we wanted to provide in the Uncommon community a safe space for community managers to have those hard conversations. Yeah. Um, 
so we put a poll into the community and said, hey, we're going to have you know, an hour-long session with Karosh and whoever would like to join. Mm -hmm. um, it won't be recorded so that people mm -hmm. can feel like they can really be candid. Yes. Um, but before, like, we won't necessarily have time to dive into all six topics. So here are the six topics, right? And here's his newsletter. Um, vote, let's vote on it. Mm -hmm. And then so people were able to vote and then shape what they really wanted to focus on right. within that hour. Um, and then as an addendum, we had him on Twitter spaces and talked about like the other three that we couldn't get to. Mm -hmm. But in that way, we wanted to give people, again, like flexibility in ways that they interacted with us um, and ways that they interacted with the event itself, but also knew that they would be getting served what they were looking to talk about the most. Mm -hmm. um, and then we had another one with really recently with Max Pete, who's the community and customer support lead at Super High. And he had written a piece about um, 10 lessons I learned mm -hmm. in my first year as a, as a community manager. And I was like, Max, this is great. A lot of people are just stepping into the community management space. Right. Mm -hmm. So what you're learning and sharing, like how do we help amplify that so that other people can be safe to ask these questions that are like, maybe I should have already known that, or maybe it's mm. only me that has this question, which I guarantee you, it's not only you. No, yes. it's just me. And so, yeah, <laughs> um, it might just be the rock, but, um, <laughs> and so again, we put that into the community and said, here are Max's 10 lessons. Like, what are the, what are the three that resonate with you most? Mm -hmm. And that's where we'll focus most of our time. And then if we have more time, then we'll like, you know, go from there. So it was really helpful to see and actually really surprising in certain ways. Mm -hmm. I was like, I didn't know that's what your mind was on the most right now. Like, mm -hmm. that's so good to know. Right. And I think it was good for others to also see, oh, there are 14 other people that have this same, um, like, you know, uh, oh gosh, I'm like nervous now on stage. I was like, I need to recall one. <laughs> Max, type in the chat. I know you're watching. <laughs> uh, he really is though. So uh, I think in those moments, right, where you can offer that co-shaping space yeah. along with your communi community members right. at the time, like when it's timely and relevant to them. Mm -hmm. So that might even change, right? Like what was how people voted on those topics, um, a couple of weeks ago, maybe six months from now, it might be a little different because they're also in a new place in their community building, community right. hosting, community leading journey. Right. Yeah, it's really creating a leveled playing field for all community managers, whether they're just entering or whether they've been here for decades, right? So I, I love your approach. And, you know, with everything you say, there's this um, inclusivity and you're always being mindful of people in all different stages of their career. So I love that. Um, mm -hmm. Anyone else? So, Piper, what mm -hmm. you were? We had lunch today. Yes, and I love yummy. Yeah, <laughs> we, um, you had your yeah. Philadelphia roll. Yes, and uh, I loved the analogy you gave about. Um, you know, we were talking about memorable events, but memorable moments are also really important. Mm -hmm. And you used a really great analogy, and so I would love if you could share that. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, the analogy is a self-care thing. It's like self-care can be used as community care. And <laughs> thank you. Um, the way I came up with this concept for myself was that, you know, for many years, all I did was wash my face. I didn't do any, I, I didn't use uh, makeup or lotion or toner or anything. Just water. Just water. Yeah. And, um, and when we started doing all these Zoom meetings, I didn't like the way I looked. I was like, okay, so there's enough of that. <laughs> and so I decided to do a makeup routine and skincare routine. And, um, and at first it was such a chore and yeah. I really couldn't stand it. It was like, it took 45 minutes and I don't like waking up early. I'm not a morning person. Mm -hmm. and, but after a while it became something that really fed me. And so um, it occurred to me, I was listening to In Before the Lock, and I can't remember exactly how that made me equate this or make this analogy jump to community care. But it's like, okay, so you, you decide on something and you do something every day in the community. Right, the repetition, just repeating a certain act for your community, mm -hmm. and people Everything. are going to remember that. People yeah. are going to remember that, but it, it's not necessarily even in the community. Mm -hmm. You do something for the community every day, and that will help 
the community, which will grow the community, which becomes memorable right. to people. So it's not necessarily you doing something with the community. Mm -hmm. It's just, you, you know, with the members. Right. It's you doing something with the community. Mm. Just so, so something small, like mm -hmm. washing our face. Yeah. <laughs> something small like yeah, that. Yeah, using moisturizer. Yes. <laughs> now your skin is glowing. Yeah. Thank <laughs> well, and then um, Kayla, I would love to hear from you. Um, you know, you had a few takeaways and just about your approach towards events. And it was really thorough um, yes. in terms of how you thought about the user experience. So, so. I have an acronym that I use whenever I plan an in-person event. Um, also, I just want to preface, before doing community at startups, I did sales training at startups. And if there's anything to know about salespeople, it's that we love acronyms. <laughs> so just help us remember anything or like give us an acronym for yeah. it. So the acronym I use is FILLS, F-I-L-L-S. And when I think about in-person event, first thing I think about is format. Like which formats do we want to include in the two hours, one hour, whatever time slot we have together. So I know sometimes it's like a lecture, maybe Q and A, and then we'll open it up for happy hour. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's breakouts, and then we move to the roof uh, for beer up there, like et cetera. Just consider like what the formats are. And the way you consider the formats are for I, which is intention, Mm -hmm. And I know you've heard this a bajillion times our last two days, but intention also serves when like you're co-collaborating with another host. Sometimes there's arguments. And if that happens for you to both come back, it's like, why are we doing this? Like just relax on that intention one more time settles a lot of the arguments or any um, kind of, I guess, the disagreements you might have at right? friction. Yeah. And, th and that is the intention really is a theme, overriding theme. If you right. all, if y'all take nothing away from this event, take away intention. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the first L is for love. And I know in a lot of companies, it sounds kind of woo woo, like, oh, love. But what I mean about that is if you're going to gather people, they can feel when something is like, I'm here because you want something from me. Like, I'm here because you're trying to sell me on a software. Yeah. If you're gathering people and it's like, I'm here because you're trying to make me a better team leader, make me a better marketer, make me a better whatever position you're trying to help them with, they can understand that energy. Like, never let it be lost that, like, we, we know what is going to be put out there. And if it's not coming from a place of love, you're going to push people away. Even if you're trying to mask it with like, here's all the value you're going to get. If it's not coming from a servant place, uh, attendees can often feel that. Mm -hmm. The second L is for listen. As a host, there's like a bajillion things you're thinking about. Like, is catering going to come on time? Did everyone get in the building OK? Do we have enough name tags? And I try to delegate all of that so that as a person who's hosting the event, I can just be in front and listen to the person in front of me. Um, I think today, a lot of the hosts at Bevy were really good at just like listening to me whenever I was like, hey, here, my name's Kayla, I wanna connect, being so present in the moment like that. And the S is for slow down. You remember when you were kids at the pool and you saw that sign that was like, uh, slow down, don't run? And what slow down does for me as a event organizer is that it forces me to walk through the entire experience of an attendee minute by minute. So I consider like, all right, attendee arrives to the site of the uh, event. So one, does a door open? Do they need someone to check them in? If they're checked in, can they go in the elevator without scanning a card? What does it take for them to come up? When they're up, like what are they seeing, smelling, touching, hearing? So I often will open up with like a happy hour jazz music. The candle that we light at the org is by Amass, M-A-A-S-S. It's our like iconic scent. Everyone that comes in always takes photos of the candle. And for food, we have like some sandwiches. And then for like what you're hearing is maybe other people having conversations. But when you slow down and like go through the whole thing as if you were experiencing it, I think that allows you to physically manifest it for what you're mentally thinking about. And I've never been able to physically create something I'm proud of unless I've mentally pictured it first. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes if I can't mentally see it, I have a really hard time physically planning it. Mm -hmm. So like when co-collaborators are like, hey, I want to put this event on with you, I'm constantly asking thousands of questions so we can get clear, like, am I seeing the same event you're seeing? Because mm -hmm. we're going to create this together. And if right. we're not seeing the same thing, this event could totally flop. Like vi envisioning it, but yes. articulating it. Yes. And yeah. making sure you're on the same page. Yes. So important. Slowdown's important because I get 
overexcited with events and I can easily jump to something right away, but I'm like, let's take a step back, walk through this. Yeah. What does a person experience from coming in to all the way to leaving? And one thing I always try to make sure is that every person that comes in is said hi to. Because like talk about memorable events, I've gone to things after work, which like in New York, after work on a Wednesday, there are 1,700 other things you could do in the city and someone's choosing to like come and spend time with you for whatever you're gathering people for. I never take that lightly. I always wanna make sure I say hi. I wanna make sure the event is like well prepped because I think time and energy is like the scarcest resource someone's ever gonna give you. Right. Maybe even they're giving money if they commuted, you know, lifts, taxis, those aren't cheap. Right. So I'm always trying to give back, like, one, I expected you to be here. I saw you check in. Thank you for coming. And two, on the way out, like, make sure you say bye to them. Right. Yeah, there's nothing worse than coming to something all the way out somewhere, and then no one says hi to you, no one bothers to acknowledge you came, and then you leave. Right. Like, that's such true? a shitty feeling. They come, they eat, they leave. I know. <laughs> they come, they eat, they leave. I know. I think something that you're getting at, too, is, like, a great event, or any event really, is a form of a story. And so what you're doing with that walkthrough is you're stepping into the story of what that person is going to experience. And I think that there's a, another tool to be able to, to, be able to access that, that, that empathy, right? That getting into what that person will experience is, is truly storyboarding. And it might seem silly at first that you're like gonna storyboard out this thing, but like storyboarding is not just for designers or not just for animators or not just for story. It really is a tool that you yeah. can use to be like, okay, what happens first in the chapter? Where are they gonna walk in? Yes. And then what do they see? What yes. are they, who greets them? Who is standing there? Who do I need? And then you start to see the gaps or the sentences that are missing in the story. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's so helpful to it like, it's really that 30 minutes that you spend storyboarding out what a person's experience is going to be from the beginning to the end is, I mean, I guess it comes around to enabling you to see what you forgot to be thoughtful about and then how to fill that. Yes. Yeah, totally. I love that. I've never made that connection, Rebecca. I love that so much. I'm going to steal that. Take it. Yes. All right. <laughs> I did not invent it, so definitely take it. <laughs> okay. Well, I love that. You know, just overarching theme here is just really to, I mean, the tools that we have available, a lot of us have those things. It's not like these are tools you have to buy. It's really just being empathetic, yeah. using yourself in the shoes of your audience. Yeah. Repetition, just continuing to do something so that they remember and, and so that it really sticks and resonates with them. And ultimately, it comes back to the why, right? I mean, why do we do the things that we do? We want to create an impact and cause some kind of cause to action, but it really, someone mentioned this at the um, events panel yesterday. We don't remember what someone, or we don't remember just a thought, but we remember how someone made us feel. Mm -hmm. And so to just really tap into that, it's, it's an art really. Um, and so I'm really glad that we got to talk about what makes events really memorable and the tools and the approach. Um, so just to wrap up, I would love to just let the audience know how they can connect with you. You know, if they want to reach out and have, if they have any questions, you know, perhaps Rebecca, we'll start with you. Where's the best place that they can reach you? Sure, so as the host of Common Rooms Community Uncommon, please join Uncommon. It's um, a community of over a thousand community managers, leaders, strategists, builders, or people who are interested in the space who are talking about not only what questions they have, but also helping solve each other's questions or saying like, hey, this was my experience, this is how I did this, or connecting. It's, it's a connective place where, again, we want to really, we believe that everyone together will elevate the community profession. Mm -hmm. So please join in common if that sounds interesting to you. And if you just wanna hang out with me, you can find me on Twitter at Becca Odlay. Um, and if you understand what that musical reference is, my coworker, COO Jake, will be very happy. <laughs> um, I, I just want to tell people that if you want to put on an event, you can do it in two steps. Number one is att attend a lot of events, like uh, be an attendee to so many. And then number two, keep everything you liked about that event, omit the rest. Like if there was a part of the event where you're like, that was boring, I didn't like that, just get it like, take it out of the event you want to put on. Don't do yeah. it just yeah. for the sake Get rid of the fluff. Yeah. There's so many unnecessary steps and just repeat what you like. Um, I'm Kayla J. Lim across TikTok, YouTube, Twitter. 
and Instagram. So I'm basically on every social platform. I love being social. Right. Yeah. Um, you can get me on LinkedIn. I think that's the easiest. Piper Wilson. Um, I'm going to get that picture. They took it down. I'm going to get that picture up there because right now there's an old picture and I'll get the one with purple hair so you can know that it's me. I love the purple I hair. I love the purple <laughs> hair. <laughs> Thank you. Well, again, I'm CG. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm part of the CFX community, obviously. And so, well, thank you so much, ladies. It was really great talking with you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.